Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, May 10th, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, it's an up, up day everywhere. Asia, Europe, USA, oil, gold, Bitcoin's down a bit. Still above that 9,000 mark. Can't get over that 11,000 break that we see as the move higher. Dow rallies nearly 200 points, notches six-day winning streak following the release of weaker-than-expected U.S. inflation data. Okay? That's the deal. What are the markets afraid of? Rising interest rates. So... Looks like they're going to raise interest rates two more times, they says this year, and not three more times, but we'll see. Still got some time to go. And also, what's going on is, of course, over there in the Middle East, things calmed down a little bit from overnight, but not really. So the market's moved up a little bit. And gold, gold went up on the news that Well, the dollar went down a little bit today because of those lower-than-expected inflation numbers and lower expectations for the Fed to raise rates three more times this year. So, also very important, North American gold-backed exchange-traded funds registered inflows in April at their highest level since 2017. And, of course, gold prices are also moving up on the tension growing in the Middle East. And as you hear us say all the time, there's no safer safe haven asset than gold. And apparently a lot of people feel that. And, again, we just saw what was going on with gold. It's not going below that 1,300 mark. It keeps bouncing above. And there's a reason, but no one seems to be wanting to talk about it. And here's a story in today's Financial Times. Losing their luster, gold miners hit by fears of rising cost base. So that's it, the cost. What's the cost of bringing gold out of the ground? And that's why we believe it's staying in this range. Because when you look at this story, although the precious metal is only 1% higher this year, U.S. listed gold miners' shares have dropped almost 6% in the same period. Analysts say the rising oil prices, which sent Brent crude, the benchmark above the $77 a barrel mark yesterday, helps explain why miners are trailing. In other words, the cost of energy is going up. The cost of pulling it out of the ground is going up. And let's go back to those inflation numbers that we talked about that brought the equity markets up because they were lower. What's going to happen when oil prices go up? Inflation will go up. Inflation goes up, oil prices go up, consumer demand for retail products goes down. Going back to gold, There's a price of pulling it out of the ground. The higher the energy costs go, the higher the price of pulling it out of the ground, and we don't see gold going below what it costs to pull out of the ground, and that's why we're seeing it not go below $1,300 an ounce. And if it does, again, our maximum downside risk as we see it in our forecasting is not more than $100, which is a minimal downside risk in a, an arena of gold being based at $1,300. But again, we do not give financial advice. Those are trend forecasts. And on to oil. U.S. crude ticked up as investors took profit on a rally triggered by potential disruption to oil flows from major exporter Iran in the face of U.S. sanctions. Quote, Europe and China will not fight against the U.S. sanctions. They will grumble and accept it. There is no one 
who will realistically choose Iran over the U.S., said energy consultant FGE. And they're looking at 1 million barrels per day limit for exports imposed during previous sanctions will be imposed. As before, it may take several rounds of reductions to reach target levels, FGE says. So you go back, and what does that mean? It means the sanctions are going to cause a lot of problems. This is going to be very messy. It also means a lot more. It means war is on the horizon. It means your trend alert, trend alert, as forecast, U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia leading us to war, be prepared. And that's another trend alert you got this week, two of them with information analysis and strategies to consider guaranteed you won't find anywhere else. Be prepared. Again, if you prepare for the worst and the worst doesn't happen, you lost nothing. But if you're not prepared and the worst does happen, potentially you can lose everything. So again, in this trend alert, forecast analysis that you won't find anywhere else. China. Plans offer to buy more from U.S. China will likely offer to import more U.S. goods during negotiations. Exactly. And again, to us, this is a Trump positive. The Iranian deal that he pulled out of, we see it as a negative, causing more disruption, more war, and less growth for everyone involved in it. The trade deal, we see it as a positive. Bring more jobs and more money back because this is slave landia. The money's only going to the rich, and if you need any more proof, here it is, folks. CEO pay soars to post-recession high. Isn't that wonderful, huh? Chief executives at the U.S. biggest companies saw their median pay hit $12.1 million. While U.S. borrowers struggles pose test for private credit funds. U.S. companies with credit ratings in junk territory took out $564 billion worth of commercial loans last year, topping the high watermark reached on the eve of the financial crisis, according to the International Mafia Federation, Monetary Fund. So, the rich are getting richer, and everyone else is getting poorer. Hey, you had an election over there in Malaysia, snap election. And Mohammed, 92 years old, won a shock election victory on Thursday in a potential earthquake that toppled the country's scandal plague premier. Isn't that something? 92. Look at this cat, man. Anyway, I find that really pretty uh, uplifting. Whew. Anyway, moving on. This is not uplifting. CIA pick vows not to restart torture policy. Haspel suggests she would follow the law rather than the orders from the president. Isn't that wonderful, huh? You'll follow the law this time. Oh, if only women's were in charge. Oh, yeah, the torture queen over here. Again, it doesn't make any difference. Save it for the kiddies and everyone else that wants to buy into the garbage. That if only women were in charge. Hey, imagine if we had a black president. Oh, yeah, everything would be perfect. It has nothing to do with race, creed, gender, or color. It has to do with the human spirit and good and bad comes in all of them. Save the rest for everybody else. And you don't need any more proof than the torture queen. 
who they'll probably bring in. Hey, remember Trump was going to drain the swamp? Poof. Yeah. The swamp filler. Bolton. Haspel. Pompeo. One, one lousy creature after another. But hey, that's who lives in the swamps. Swamp creatures of Washington, D.C. Ah, Europe to press U.S. for sanction relief as tensions mount over Iran. Again, a lot of dislocation at a time when you have volatility in the markets, at a time when Europe economy is going down. Global companies weigh the risk of maintaining Iran ties. China poised to cash in on Europe's lost business. Yeah, you know, the business of China is business. The business of America is war. And you're seeing the results. Blow to Iran. Pat emboldens Netanyahu. Political outlook improves for Israeli Premier, a Trump backer, amid... Corruption probes, you know the saying, when all else fails, they take you to war. Literally minutes, Tuesday, after Trump announced he was pulling out of the Iran deal, foo, foo, Israel attacked Syria with missile strikes. Israelis have rallied behind Mr. Netanyahu's right-wing backers, to support his policies on Iran, a shift that has scrambled the nation's politics and boosted his fortunes. Opposition politicians, who only weeks ago called for the Israeli leader's resignation over alleged corruption, have lined up alongside Mr. Netanyahu. Isn't that great, huh? Politicians, look up the dictionary. Yep, see what they mean people who are manipulative and devious. Netanyahu says Iran crossed a red line after Israel pounds Iranian targets in Syria. He said, whoever hit us will get hit seven times over. Whoever prepares themselves to attack us will attack first. That's what we have done and that is what we will continue doing, that's Netanyahu said. Because last night it was reported that Iran fires about 20 rockets into Golan Heights from Syria. Israelis say, say it must be the truth. Because then the United States says, White House condemns Iran after rocket attack, strongly supports Israel's right to self-defense. Eh, this didn't get printed. This is from the international news. An Iranian official denied Thursday that the Islamic Republic was behind an overnight barrage of missiles on Israel. Quote, Iran does not have any connection to the missiles fired at Israel. It was the Syrian army that fired the missiles, the deputy head of Iran's National Security Council said. Again, read your trend alert. The information is in here as well as the hypocrisy. And the hypocrisy being, in part, White House condemns Iran after rocket attack, strongly supports Israel's right to self-defense, no one else has the right to self-defense. Only Israel, only the United States, and only their coalition of the killing, like the Saudis. So when the Houthis strike back at, Yemen, at, at Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, oh, they're terrible for striking back. They is terrorists. Israel has been bombing Syria now dozens of times over the last few years and really ramped it up over the last few weeks. But if anybody strikes back at Syria at Israel, how dare you? How dare you? We can only kill. You can't because, hey, 
The United States are the exceptionals. They can do it, and we're the chosen people. We can do it too. Read your trend alert. Information that you won't find anywhere else. Analysis and insights. And finally, again, either guns or butter. United States loves guns. You saw how it's become the plantation economy with the rich getting richer. Them CEOs making all that dough and everyone else living in slave landia, working for those CEO plantation owners. The United States has dropped four spots in the latest World Happiness Report ranking. The U.S. now holds the 18th spot in the annual ranking. Isn't that great? And the U.S. is in the midst of a comp complex and worsening public health crisis involving epidemics in obesity, opiate addiction, and major depressive disorder that are all remarkable by global standards, the report said. It added that the socio-political system in the United States produces more income inequality than other countries with comparatively high incomes. The United States is also seen declining in trust, generosity, and social support. And those are some of the factors that explain why some countries are happier than others, according to the report. It's right there. Again, it could change. They just had an election in Armenia. A guy from nowhere became president. You just saw a 92-year-old man. He was there before in Malaysia, but he's back. And a snap election that nobody thought he would win. The difference with those countries and others where there's change happening, that the United States, they're not only not happy, it's a courageless nation. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news. So grand.